Hi friends and welcome back to Gardening Suburbia. My name is Amanda and I live here in Zone 6 in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am in my backyard today because it is beautiful. It's in the mid-60s. It is the warmest it has been in Ohio for, it's been a little bit. Um, although Ohio tends to fluctuate a whole bunch in the temperatures in the spring. We've got fall, spring, second spring, winter, false winter, what, the list goes on. But I thought it would be a beautiful day to come out into my backyard, evaluate what things need to be done um, because I'm already starting my seeds. I have peppers right now currently up the stairs in my office um, that are just about to germinate. Peppers take a little bit longer to germinate. Um, but I need to evaluate what items I need for this upcoming season, um, such as fresh compost, um, I think I want to add another arch trellis. And then I also recently acquired some wood um, from one of my sister's neighbors. They are moving out of the country or across country or something. And they put out some items for garbage pickup. Um, so they're free, which is awesome. But there were some beautiful pieces of wood, perfect size, already cut. Um, they just need to be put together for a beautiful new uh, garden bed which I will be putting in a section of my yard that you guys don't usually see. So I've got my camera on wide angle lens, but this is the backyard space that I typically work in. Um, and then if we come up to my driveway, we actually have some space right here that I was hoping to um, put another bed in. Now I do have a tree right here. Um, my sun comes up this way and it sets in that direction. So this tree doesn't usually put too many blossoms on it, so it doesn't get covered in foliage just because mostly it's dead. Um, but I do need to keep that in mind for how much coverage of sun. Got some garbage in my yard, of course. Um, but for coverage of sun, so like my neighbor's chimney stack creates a big, my neighbor's um, chimney stack creates a big uh, shade path. So I'm thinking, that I'll probably start my bed right here, which is quite a bit, you know, about the middle of my my land that I have from the street. Um, but let me show you the wood. So I'm going to show you guys my garage. My garage has not been messed with since uh, last season, so it is a complete disaster. Um, I did forget to completely close my garage, so of course... I don't actually use this for my car. It's just storage space. Our cars are too too big for this garage. So it's like really awkward. Um, so it just became storage. I, I definitely need to clean this out in some time, maybe today. But this is the wood that I got from those neighbors that are moving. So as you can see, I think they actually had already used this for a gardening bed. Um, but they are already like you know i've got my my width boards and my length boards and this is going to be a beautiful garden bed it's going to be just deep enough and i think this is going to be really a great addition um i think i'm going to be putting cut flowers into this bed with um maybe some squash and pumpkins coming out of the corners so that they can sprawl but we'll see what happens um i've got a couple other arch trellis designs that I'm, I'm thinking about doing this year. Also, I am kind of getting over a cold, so I might sound a little nasally compared to what I usually sound like. Um, it's actually what kind of kept me from uploading my previous video this past week, um, just because I wasn't feeling, feeling up to editing and just would get home and lay in bed. As you guys can see, a lot of what is in the garden right now is still dormant. We are starting to see some growth. This is a bed of, oh gosh, I think I put um, some alliums, which are these big, beautiful, long, like globe-shaped flowers, um, as well as tulips. And I feel like I put something else in here. Kind of made it like a lasagna. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, where like they layer in different flowers. Um, just because it gives like a, a beautiful layering effect. And I really, I packed this thing quite full because um, I wanted more flowers in my garden this year. 
Um, my blueberry plant that did so well last year is just now starting to put little growth on everything and it looks so good. I'm so excited for all of the blueberries that this plant's going to give. Meanwhile, my other two blueberry plants look quite sad. Um, I do have them in these cloth planters. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Although my friend who also has a backyard garden used, um, I think it's smart pots. I don't think that these are smart pots. I think I got these off of Amazon. Um, but she used smart pots for her, uh, blueberry plants and she had success. So I don't know if it's just, they need a couple years to get established. Um, or if I just kind of <laughs> messed with those, but this one I got for like a really good deal at a local, um, seed and supply store in Kentucky. Um, and it, it was you know, like, I think it was like 12 or $13. It was a really cheap price for how well established this plant was. And I got this last year. I got blueberry, blueberries on it last year, so I'm definitely going to get a good little hunk of harvest from this guy this season. So over here is another um, perennial uh, tulip bed. I left all of my tulip bulbs in here because I knew that they would divide and separate and become even more f like filled. Um, so as you can see, there are tons of little tulips popping up everywhere. I do still need to go through and cut down all of the, the dead and decaying stuff, but I figured I'd leave them up for as long as I could because a lot of insects actually lay um, larvae in the stalks of dead things. So like, I can't remember what exactly, but I feel like there are beneficial insects that actually use dead foliage to lay insects or lay eggs so I don't really want to cut this down just yet um which is why I haven't done anything with them but just look how awesome there's so many tulips in here I'm so excited to see what this looks like um right here I have some raspberries these are actually I believe that these are the ones that I had gotten from my sister um, and I am seeing some green on them. Um, this variety, although, has thorns, which I'm not super excited about because it <laughs> just makes it a little more difficult. My dog also tramples this a whole bunch because it's in the ground and he is a dog. Oh, and update. So... The garlic, I asked you guys on a previous video where you guys think I should plant my garlic this last season because the first season I planted in that bed right there um, and my heads of garlic were, you know, about yay big. They weren't humongous, but they are also weren't, they weren't a great size. They, they weren't fun to work with in the kitchen. Um, so I decided to take your guys' advice and do it in my brick bed which gets the most amount of sunlight in my yard um and i feel like these the green on these garlic looks so much better than the green or foliage of the garlic in this bed now it still looks good but the difference is is quite noticeable between the two. Um, so this bed is practically filled with garlic besides maybe like this little section right here. I have some corms planted here and then I had carrots planted here last season. So that part right there is bare. And then of course I wanted to experiment a lot with the garlic and I had so much extra that I decided to fill in in a couple of odds and ends spots in my garden bed in my garden beds just to see where it you know really thrived so i've got a few uh, cloves planted in here of course i have some of this guys looks like i've got some good growth on some kale that overwintered um, and it doesn't look like it has any aphids on it because i couldn't harvest any of this stuff in the fall last year because it was covered in aphids and aphids just make my skin crawl. 
So I left all of this stuff in the ground, got some cauliflower, some cabbage. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell, but that's what it was. <laughs> um, and when I get ready to plant these beds out, I will just cut these at the base of the soil and leave the roots in so that it's just adding to that soil structure. I'm thinking I'm going to continue to leave this bed right here for cut flowers and then plant some beans on this trellis. I think that would be really nice. Um, this back trellis is going to be left for loofahs and some, I think, Kajari melons. It would be really cool. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to do some work in the the garage today get things a little cleaned out and see see where we're going from there I did plant yeah <laughs> that's that's a garlic clove I decided to try out garlic in the green stalks um, and I don't know that those guys fared too well yeah um, but that may have just been my, just my my bad doing because as you can see, it's quite depleted in these. Um, I planted, did an experiment on this green stock last season where I planted indeterminate tomatoes and it honestly did not do very well. And I think that was because I didn't fertilize it on a regular schedule like I should have. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this guy real fast. Um, this is a tomato plant that I just kind of let do what it does during the winter. Um, and then I'm going to try to get a majority of the leaves out of here. And then I have a bunch of this ivy. It, it's near impossible to get ivy out of my backyard just because it grows its roots under the, the, the grass and just kind of spreads like wildfire. It's completely taken over this uh, mulberry tree that's right here. Um, every year I cut it back so that it's not completely taking over. Um, but eventually it just regrows to where it was. So I'm going to try to cut that back so it's not growing so much into my garage and then try to clean up my space as much as I can to get it ready for the season that's going to come because as soon as it's time to start planting things out, it's just going to get hectic um, even with trying to get everything I need planted when it needs to be planted. I am, you know, especially with the cold I have, it's, it's been fun. So let's get this cleaned up a little bit so it's a little bit more manageable. So this is actually something else that I got from my sister's neighbor. Um, I don't really know what they were using them for, but this is a really thick plastic. Um, I am planning on doing markets this year. I actually just signed up for um, quite a few at one that's local to me. Hope, I'm waiting on approval, but if I am approved, I'm really hoping that I will be able to sell plant starts there. Um, and so I got two of these guys and I figured that these would be perfect to set up alongside my long table. So I have like an eight foot table and then have these two little, almost like coffee table sized, um, plastic shelves that I can use to set my plants on for the plant sale. And I figured that would just make it a little cooler because it's different levels. It's more visually appealing for it to be like 
stacked or whatnot. And I got them for free, and that is <laughs> fantastic. Um, the only downside to these things is that they're kind of bulky, um, and I have a rather small four-door sedan. Um, I did manage to get both of these in my car here, so I just might have to make a few trips um, for the markets. But I thought that was a super cool find, plus even if, you know, these don't work out for markets. I can use them in my gardening spaces um, just because I feel like they'll, they'll last quite a long while. Don't knock my phone over, okay? I think I'm going to actually keep this box um, to lay at the bottom of my new bed to kind of stop the growth of weeds through it. I know it's not going to be a permanent fix, um, but it at least worked for the season, which honestly, it's not going to really hopeful. It's really all I can hope for. Um, so I'm going to leave this to the side. Um, this is actually a green stock box, which they were pretty good about using paper products for like the like the tape instead of plastic and I don't see any labels on it. I think I might have ripped those off already except for this one little piece um, which is something to be mindful of when using cardboard boxes in your garden. Take off any of the tape, any of the plastic bits because that really doesn't uh, break down quite as fast as you would like. Just about like two years, I think it was two years ago um, for my tomato trellising, for my indeterminate tomatoes, I used these wooden stakes, um, which kind of can see the one that I had. Um, this year, I think I'm going to construct this into kind of like, either like a square, I don't really know how to describe it. I, I want to call it like a teepee, um, but instead of it having just the three sides, it'll have four sides. So four sides, and it'll have support beams going around um, as it goes up. So there'll be like a couple support beams going horizontally as I build it up. And I think I'm going to use that for my beans. Um, I think that'd be a really cool um, add-in. Hang on, my dog's trying to potty in my garden. <laughs> Anyway, I think I'm going to try to do <laughs> something like that for the beans. Um, if I can find a picture of it, I'll go ahead and post it, show it on the screen. Um, but I think that would be really cool, visually, like, different from what I currently have in my garden. Because right now I have a, I think it's an 8-foot long cattle panel, which, by the way, if you're going to be doing an arch trellis, a 16-foot panel is what you want. Um, the eight foot works, but if you were any taller than me, you probably, I'm like five, five. If you were any taller, you probably would want that 16 foot because it's kind of short. Um, and then I have a super cheap trellis 
that I purchased off of Amazon. I added chicken wire to it. And honestly, I could have probably tossed it last year um, because it is rusted. I lost, or the two bottom legs on it, so a layer of the legs rusted completely off. So it's shorter than it should be. Um, I'm really just looking to add some really cool visual, visually different elements in my garden just to keep it really fresh and interesting. And I want it to be a space that I want to go into and that I love to be in. So I think that these, instead of just tossing them because I can't use them for tomato trellises because they're not quite strong enough, um, I can use them for bean trellises because they'll definitely be strong enough to hold the beans. Plus, why not use it if I have it? Um, I have seen people use bamboo um, stakes for that as well. So, you know, got your two poles and then you add your horizontal element at differing heights to give your beans things to, to climb. Um, I can probably use either garden twine. I do have a ton of zip ties and that's typically my go-to. The zip ties I do have are not UV zip ties. So they typically only last for the season, which the cattle panels I have out there right now probably need a refresh. Um, those are just the ones that I purchased, so I'm gonna use them. Um, I just gotta find places to put all this stuff. I've honestly got so much garbage in this <laughs> this place, it's not even funny. Things that previous tenants, just because I'm, I have a rental place, um, that previous tenants left and, I mean, there's so much damage to this house, it's not even funny. But it's not mine. I've told my landlord all the things that she should know, and it's just, it's her choice. So, I do what I can with what I got. So, I think that this trash can right here is going to be perfect for holding all of my bamboo stakes, um, as well as the wooden stakes, tea posts, um, I think I, if I consolidate them into this bucket or trash bin, um, that'll be nice. So I'm just using an old soil bag as a trash bag for all of my garbage that's in here. Just hoping I don't come across any spiders. That would not be fun. Well, friends, I'm going to finish cleaning up my garage um, while I still have the energy to do so. Um, but I want to thank you guys for joining me today as I get ready for spring. And I hope that you guys are also getting ready for spring because it is just around the corner. Um, starting seeds has already begun and it's just going to keep piling on and moving faster and faster. So I hope you guys are having a beautiful weekend. Um, I hope you're having a beautiful weekend and I want to thank you again for just spending some time with me. Um, if you want to enjoy any of my other content, I recently uploaded my pepper seed starting video. 
So if you guys want to go ahead and watch that, I'll pop that up there for you. But until the next time, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.